You want to get strong, but could it make you weak? Your kidneys, that is. The standard American diet is about 15% calories from protein, and at this point, there's little doubt that consuming 1.5 to twice that amount is key to helping to build muscle, lose fat, and manage appetite and blood sugar. Here's how New Jersey-based dietitian Andrea Berez puts it. Protein intake can be pretty beneficial, you know, for our waistlines. It helps improve satiety, helps increase caloric energy expenditure, um, certainly, you know, helps with our weight in, in the long run. So um, I think that the American Academy of, of Nutrition and that American Heart Association, the American Diabetes Association, have really have to uh, look into this and, and change their recommendations. But what about your kidneys? At this point, we are relatively certain that the more protein you consume, the more work the kidneys have to do. And here is where we run into what many people see as the catch-22 of high-protein diets. You are making yourself look nicer, but you are damaging yourself, or maybe even killing yourself, right? People get very dramatic about this. There's a lot that we don't know. So for today's video, we spoke to two very clever dietitians who looked at a ton of studies to get to the bottom of this very thorny question. So let's make you an expert in high-protein diets. So what is a high protein diet, first of all? Well, people normally talk about protein as a percentage of overall calories or as a number of grams you wanna hit per day, like a certain number per pound of body weight or per kilogram of body weight. I actually made a very good video about figuring out the ideal amount of protein you should consume. You can check it out right there. Really long story short, it is about 0.75 grams per pound of body weight. It's a controversial number for everybody. That's like roughly what most experts agree on. So for me, I'm a 200 pound guy. I would be eating about 150 grams of protein per day or about 20% of my overall calories. But a whole lot of people out there prefer to have a gram of protein per pound of body weight. That's usually given as the golden number. So that'd be 200 grams of protein per day or 27% of my overall calories. From a protein standpoint, I always like to see probably anywhere between 20 to 30% of my overall calories. So that might not sound that high as far as percentage of overall calories goes. But when you remember that the USDA recommends about 60 grams of protein per day to avoid a deficiency, and I'm consuming up to 200 grams of protein per day, you can see a pretty big difference here, especially if I were trying to lose weight and I were eating like 2000 calories per day, then if I was eating that much protein, it'd be 30 to 40% of my overall calories. And a lot of people consume even more than that when they're trying to lose weight because it might do a better job at retaining muscle as I explained in my video. So when you look at these numbers, you really get a sense of the fact that there's a really big difference between what many athletes consume as far as protein goes and what many governing bodies in nutrition recommend you consume. So what's the hubbub with kidney damage? Is there any data to support this? Well, here's what Andrea Perez has to tell you. It's been thought uh, thought about for a very long time now that um, that high protein diets were detrimental to the kidneys and they were causing them to to hyperfiltrate, get rid of all of our excess um, toxins, you know, in our in our system. That we had to go into overdrive to do that. That idea was popularized by some studies published in the 1980s and 1990s that found that when you consume a lot of protein, it increases the glomerular filtration rate or GFR, which is a marker for waste filtration in the kidneys. So following on from that, you could conclude that the more protein you consume, especially past a certain threshold, the more work the kidneys have to do. But it doesn't really necessarily follow that means you're damaging the kidneys. You seem to just be giving them more work to do. There's been a few studies, actually there was a meta-analysis that was done just a few months ago from the Journal of Clinical Nutrition um, that's actually say, uh, concluding that high protein diets are really not that detrimental to our kidneys. You know, it's not causing any increases in our, what they call our GFR, which is what indicates that our kidneys are in, are in hyper overdrive. So that does not indicate that. So these days, some more modern studies are contesting the very idea that GFR is influenced by protein. It might be more influenced by the number of calories consumed, if it's influenced at all. So I'm not saying that protein has no effect on your kidneys or on your GFR. It's more that the link between protein and GFR and GFR and kidney damage is being pretty hotly contested. So this idea is not as rock solid as it used to be. All right, but forget glomerular filtration rates. Is there any evidence that athletes like you consuming a gram of protein per pound of body weight have had negative effects on their kidneys? There are two studies that get cited a lot. One was on 14 resistance trained athletes that followed them for a year. They were consuming three grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, which is well over a gram per pound of body weight. And they found no negative effects on kidney function or on blood lipids, and they didn't even gain any fat mass either. There was one other study that followed bodybuilders and some other athletes for a week. They were eating 2.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, 
found no negative effects on kidney function like urea and creatinine, these sorts of things that are excreted by the kidneys were all in normal ranges. So a lot of people read those studies as meaning a gram of protein per pound of body weight, which very few athletes consider exceeding, is totally fine. And it really has been so contrary to what we've believed for so many years. I don't think I would recommend anybody going on an extremely, extremely high protein diet. Maybe uh, athletes or, you know, super bodybuilders, they can tolerate a lot more than us healthy individuals. Um, but even people who have uh, type 2 diabetes or have high blood pressure, um, those individuals, you know, are, are at higher risk for developing chronic kidney disease. And even in those individuals, um, consuming a, a higher protein diet has been shown to, to not be very, not, not to cause any extra harm. Dietitian Sarah Madrim, though, is a bit more wary here. The one on a high protein diet has no harmful effects in resistance trained males. You know, that was a study of, of only 14 men. So, albeit like it had a particular outcome that, that, you know, a high protein diet did not have a negative impact on the kidneys, 14 men does not science substantiate, you know. And it, similarly to the, the other one, they only measured things for seven days. So, if you're a healthy population, you're not going to see an impact in your kidneys in seven days. Which is fair. More research is needed on this. And as Ms. Marjoram notes, there's not a ton of motivation to allocate funds to expensive long-term research here. There is motivation, but it's way down the pecking order. There are a lot, other, there are a lot of other things that are more, should be more prioritized in terms of putting resources into the research. You know, every, as with all things nutrition and health, it, it's all relative. I think if you have healthy, reading through your article, if you have healthy kidneys, I don't think, I know in the very short term that your kidneys are probably going to be fine. There is not a whole lot of data that has looked at very long-term studies of the impact of a high protein diet on a healthy population and their kidneys. So we don't really have a lot of data to suggest that high protein diets are bad for the kidneys long term. But we also don't have a ton of data to suggest that it's not going to have any bad issues at all. Like we just don't have a lot of data. We do have some interesting data that I've cited here. So it doesn't look like it's bad for the kidneys. But to be fair, scientists are not as unanimous in agreement about this as they are about like the benefits of broccoli. Now, it is true that a lot of experts recommend a lower protein diet for people with impaired kidney function. When I spoke to biochemist Dr. Trevor Cashy about this for the full article I wrote for this, which you can get in the description below, he told me that this is sort of like saying that running with a broken leg is really bad for your leg, but that doesn't mean that running will break your leg. I think just the importance of looking at the overall diet. I mean, long-term damage, you know, if what you're considering high protein is what you described to me for yourself personally, I think you can move forward pretty confidently that your kidneys are fine. Now, if at some point you, there's another situation that renders your kidneys stressed or challenged, protein is a, one of the first places I would make a difference, you know, make a change. And I think that's a pretty good place to end this video. There are certainly way more benefits associated with high protein diets than risks, and there's very little evidence to suggest that high protein diets are bad for the kidneys long term, although I wouldn't mind having a few more studies to confirm that. So that's everything from me. Uh, if you do have any concerns here though, I definitely recommend you go speak with your physician because I am not a doctor. If you're gonna check up, get some blood work done, make sure your kidneys are in tip top shape, it's always a good idea. And if you wanna read the full written article that I made for this video, just Google Barbend and high protein diets kidneys.